Ciao. I'm Marianne Esposito. Today on Ciao Italia, a bowl of lemons. When is a lemon big enough? Well, when it's a lemon from Procida, which is an island off the coast of Naples. And today I want to make you a sauce that is typical of the island of Procida, but we have to start with our own lemons. So you need to find the largest lemons you can find. And when I say that they're not large enough, I mean they're large like this. So if you're on Procida and you are Walking around, you'll see these huge lemons, huge. And they're all kind of gnarly, and they're used in a variety of ways. And today, we are going to make a pesto sauce with lemons that are often referred to as limone di pane, bread lemons, because they're so thick with the pith. So we need three large lemons. So you want to take three large lemons and cut them up. And by the pith, I mean this white part in here, which we all know can be very puckery. But the lemons in Procida are very sweet. So they use them for sauces and they use them for salads. So we're gonna juice these lemons into a bowl. You wanna get at least about a half a cup of lemon juice. And when I was in Naples, not too long ago, I was sitting on a park bench on Via Partenope, where I was staying in a hotel close to Via Partenope. And I was looking out at the Bay of Naples, and I knew that you could take a ferry over to Procida, which is a fishing island, actually. Lots of fishermen live there. And when you go there, the houses are these brilliant colors brilliant green, brilliant pinks, yellows. It's like looking at a rainbow. So you can get really good seafood there, and much of it is seasoned with lemons. So lemons are a big product on the island of Procida. So I'm getting a lot of juice out of these. And here's my last one. Okay, so we have the juice. And let me just show you what I mean. I'm just gonna cut this grapefruit just to give you an idea. See how thick that pith is? That pith is what gives it the name, limone di pane, bread lemons, because the pith is very spongy, and that part is used in cooking. So if you ever go to Procida and you get a lemon, don't be surprised that it's gonna look almost the size of a personal watermelon. So we're gonna put that aside, put the lemon juice aside, and now make the pesto. So for this, we need garlic, and you can do this right in a food processor. So a clove of garlic, one clove of garlic goes in, this is very fast. And you'll want some pine nuts. So here we have pine nuts that we've toasted. The ones from Italy are very, very creamy. So if you can find them, that would be great, because oftentimes pine nuts are not coming from Italy. So pine nuts go in about two ounces, and then you want, oh, a little heat with this, yes, some hot red pepper flakes. Maybe a quarter of a teaspoon is good. If you like more, you can put more in. And then we want some fresh parsley and some basil. So the first thing I'm gonna do is whirl this part up first. I wanna get this a little bit coarse. So put the top on. and give it a pulse. All right, you wanna get it coarse, but leave some texture there. And now we're going to add parsley, flat leaf Italian, about a half a cup, and fresh basil leaves. So you really want, first of all, what I like to do with this part of the recipe is just break those basil leaves up a little bit. You know why? Because basil 
does not like to be bruised. It really, really doesn't. So the less I have to bruise it in the, the food processor, the better off this is going to be and will stay green. Because there are several things that basil does not like. It does not like cold. It does not like water on its leaves. And it can wilt. It can really wilt very easily. So the best thing is to get it as fresh as you can, either from your own garden or you're going to a farmer's market or you just brought it home from the grocery store and use it. Use it up as soon as you can. So by just breaking these up a little bit, this is going to help prevent a lot of excess bruising in the food processor. And actually, you know, in Italy, when they when they choose basil leaves for making a pesto, they'll always choose the smallest leaves because that'll be the least bruising and they're the tastiest. So now we can put this in, chopped up a little bit. That doesn't happen with parsley, so I'm good there. And we want a half a cup of Parmigiano-Reggiano grated, but I'm not going to use all of that. I'm going to save about a quarter of a cup, so let me put, I'm going to save about a quarter of a cup for the pasta that this is going to go on. Well, that's about right. And now we're going to pulse this again. Just to get that, get those leaves. You see what I'm doing here? I'm just going very gently with this. Okay, now we can add some lemon juice. And now we will only want to use enough lemon juice to get this into a paste. So I'm just going to start with a little of the juice. I don't know how much I'll need. We'll see. Put that back on. And you see what's happening. It's starting to get pasty. I'm going to add just a little bit more. Put that on. Okay, and... A drizzle of olive oil now, just a drizzle, goes in, put this back on. You have to have pazienza. Okay, now I can take this out into a bowl and show you what that looks like. Let me get, up. get something to get that out with. Oh, it smells so good. Very lemony. So see, it's nice and pasty. And look at how nice that green color stayed. So this is enough pesto, really, uh, to do at least a half a pound, if not more, of pasta. But we're only going to do a half a pound of pasta today. So really, this is not a sauce that you even have to cook. Yes, we're going to heat it up a little bit when we have the pasta cooking. But other than that, it is a cold sauce. So we can add. Just a little bit of salt to that, a piacere, and we're not going to add any pepper, but you see how beautiful that is. And that is going to cling very nicely to the pasta. So now we have to get the water boiling. So there's our beautiful pesto sauce. I've got a little bit of olive oil in a saute pan. I'm just going to add that in there. I'm cooking a half a pound of pasta, so we're going to start with that and leave that there now. Meanwhile, we have our water boiling for the pasta. And remember, when Italians drain pasta, they don't drain it into a colander. They drain it right into the pan where the sauce is. So that's why we have our pan ready. So now we've got boiling water to which we are going to add sale, salt. And you want to use a really good imported pasta. Pasta made from 100% semolina flour. So dried pastas are always made from semolina and water. That's much different than fresh pasta, which is made with unbleached all-purpose flour and eggs. This is semolina and water. So I've got a half a pound of pasta nests, spaghetti nests, because I think they're cute. I'm going to put them in, and they will uncoil as they are cooking. So we want to cook those until they are al dente. Give that just a little stir. Put the cover on. Wait till that comes back to the boil and cook them to the tooth. So the pasta is now cooked. 
please don't put oil in the water when you cook pasta. You see how nice and fluid this is? There's no oil in the water. If you start with enough water, you're not going to have that problem because pasta expands in the water. How do you know it's cooked? How do you know what al dente means? You break it in half. You look right there in the center. You see any uncooked white flour? If you do, it's not cooked. It goes back in the water. But I don't see any uncooked white flour, so now we can take this out. So we want to take it and put it right in the pan with the sauce. In Italy, of course, we all know that pastas are much firmer when you eat them than when people eat them here. And that's as it should be. You don't want to eat mushy, soggy, overcooked pasta. And when we have the pasta in the pan, all of it, then what we want to do is scoop up just a little bit of this water, the pasta water, because that has starch in it. And we need a little of that starch to help bind the sauce. So just a couple tablespoons go in. That's all you need. And now this is ready to serve as soon as we mix it. You see how beautiful this pesto sauce is. And you only need the residual heat of the pasta to mix with the sauce. You don't even have to heat the sauce. And you see how nicely this is coating the strands of pasta. That's what you want. You don't want to have sauce that's staying in the bowl. So when you can make a trench like that and you don't see any sauce puddling there, you've done it right. Okay, so now we can transfer this to our serving dish and give it a little garnish. Now here we are. I think you can see how pretty that is. And believe me, the, the taste is so fresh because it's lemons. Lemons. Look at that. Gorgeous. Mm, mm, mm. Now this is enough to serve four people. A half a pound of pasta is going to serve four people. I want to get all that sauce because I don't want to leave anything behind. Put that down. Pretty it up a little bit, just like that. And now we have our Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, the beautiful cow's milk cheese from the region of Emilia Romagna, going right over the top like that. And those pine nuts. And that's how you can make the pasta with lemon sauce that's kind of like what you would find in Procida. This is gonna sound really strange to you, but I am going to make a lemon salad. Yes, lemons. I know, you're puckering already. But this is a salad that you would find in Sicily. So you wanna start with some fresh mint. Lots of fresh mint. So we've got some fresh mint here that we're going to mince. You find a lot of mint in Sicilian dishes, everything from caponata to desserts to gelato. So mint is a favorite, favorite herb to use, and it just brightens up everything. And of course, this lemon salad is based on the fact that the lemons that grow in Sicily are very unlike ours. They're much sweeter, they're big, and so we have to use lemons that we can find in our own grocery store. So I'm going to do a little correction with the lemons that we have. I'm just going to add just a tad of sugar because this is a, such a refreshing salad. And when you think about it, Sicily is a very, very hot place in the summertime. So a salad like this is extremely refreshing. So mince your mint. And then we're just going to put this in a bowl. And we're going to add some shallots and garlic. And then I'm going to show you what to do with the lemons. OK, that looks like a good half a cup right in there. Now, shallot. This is a shallot. It's a member of the onion family. And uh, it, but it's much milder. So if you didn't have access to this, you could use just a um, an onion. So you just want to 
do some thin slices of shallot. I just think this adds a nice flavor to this. And this is a kind of a salad that we really want to marinate for about 30 minutes or so. Shallot goes in there, making that look pretty. And whenever I'm in Sicily, I, I go out of my way to have all kinds of lemon treats. I don't know if you remember, but one year on the show, we did that lemon cake that was made entirely with the entire lemon, pulp and all, and the pith. So there is our shallot. And then we want some garlic. So two cloves of garlic. Mince those up. If you don't like garlic, you can leave this out. I think this is a nice salad to have in the summertime, like they do in Sicily, when it's very, very, very warm. There is our garlic. Give that a little bit of salt, a little pepper, and just combine that a little bit. And set that aside. So now that we have that, we can work on lemons. Okay, so what we have to do is first of all, take the skin off the lemon. Use a really sharp vegetable peeler to do that. I'll tell you, those, uh, those shallots are making me cry. Anyway, take all of that off. And then you have to take this pith off because as I say, our lemons are not as sweet. So once you get to that part, you can cut the lemon in half, kind of get rid of the seeds, and then take, take a sharp little knife, see, and start taking off as much of that pith as you can to where you can actually see the flesh of the, uh, the lemon. Because this will help with this salad. I know you're saying, you're crazy, I'm not going to eat this, but I think you would find it really refreshing. So you see, you want to get down to the, right to the lemon there. And then we're just going to cube this. You need about four lemons for this salad, which is going to serve about four to six people, because you don't need a lot of it. Okay. Take that off. Okay, that's looking good. So let me move that off to the side and then show you what we do next. Four lemons. Here's some more. And now we just have to cube them. So you just cut them. See, they have a natural cut right there. Take the pits out and then we're going to put them in a bowl and we're going to add them to our mixture. And this is often eaten just with some really good crusty bread. Lemons, of course, are used in a lot of different kinds of cooking. They're especially great with artichokes that the Sicilians do, roasted artichokes with a big squirt of lemon juice and a drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. All right, there's all of the lemon. Now I'm going to give this a little sugar, okay? just to approximate that wonderful flavor that we have. We're going to mix this, and now we're going to give this a little bit of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, which we have right here. Mm. And we're going to add a few hot red pepper flakes as much as you would like. Mix that around. Then you can just cover this and set this aside at room temperature for about 30 minutes until you're ready to serve it. And then we're going to fry up some bread and we're going to serve it on beautiful toasted Italian bread slices. Let me give that just a little bit more olive oil so it's nice and fluid here. Okay. So, there you have it. 
Sicilian lemon salad with lots of mint. When life hands you lemons, you make these fabulous recipes. Remember, we started right here with this wonderful pasta dish with a pesto made from basil and parsley, pine nuts, lemons, lots of lemon juice. And now it's all ready to serve. And it has a very, very bright taste. And hey, I know you don't believe me, but how about a refreshing lemon salad from Sicily? Remember, we combined some shallots and some mint, some olive oil, some hot red pepper, and lemons. And let me let you know how it tastes. Delicious. I didn't pucker once. And until I see you Nella Cucina again, I'm Mariana Esposito. Ciao. I'm in the Vatican Museums and you would probably need a lifetime to understand everything that's here. This, these are galleries that are filled with all kinds of statues representing all kinds of people. I couldn't begin to tell you who they are, but what's interesting is the way stone comes alive in these figures. And so when I look at all of these, of course, I think, well, this all started out with just a chunk of stone, a chunk of marble. And someone who was talented was able to create life, so to speak, out of them. All these different faces have different expressions, their hairstyles. You can learn a lot about ancient history by just looking at their features, looking at the hair, looking at the clothes that they wore without really knowing, well, who were they and why are they so important and why are they here? But the Vatican, of course, has a, an immense collection of art, not just of statuary, but paintings from the most famous painters in the world, Italian painters. But this is just a walkthrough. This is just to get an idea of the scale of what is here. And I don't even think we could appreciate the scale. There's just too much to see. So I'm going to be meandering around here for a while, just taking it all in. This is just uh, visual history. It's visual history because you can look at the statues and you can see the dress that they had of the day, the, the sandals, the decoration, uh, and of course, these were all painted, so there was all colors on these statues, which I asked someone what the base was, and I was told that they're just natural pigments. I would imagine that they used things like egg yolk, maybe saffron, in, I don't know for sure, but I would assume that those would be some of the natural things that they would use. But if, when I'm walking through here, I'm thinking, imagine all of these statues with colorful garb and, you know, flesh-looking faces. Must have been amazing. Here's another mosaic that is just, it blows my mind actually, the different colors of the mosaics, the story. Look at the inner connecting chain there. Just the design of the whole thing. The phases of the moon. It's fantastic. It's what I need in my house. I'm drawn to this because not to be macabre about it, but this is a, um, you know, a sarcophagus, a tomb. And it's just, I think it's great. First of all, I'm a Leo, so I love the fact that they have the lions beautifully carved. But look at the flow, flowingness of this garment. I think it's beautiful. It, you can almost hear the music of them having a good time. It's, it's exquisite, it really is gorgeous, but that's what's in the Vatican Museum.